I think I'm going to change it up a little bit from doing the refurbish work, although I still have some left. I'm going to do these. I'm going to do all three of these for sure. Um, I'm going to change it up and see what this has in it. This is it. I think it's a piece of heat treat. We'll see. Color looks interesting. This is from my old stash. Let's see now. This is not from the nap in. I'm pretty sure I heat treated this several years ago. Yeah. It looks like a jasper of some sort. Hmm. Not the highest quality for sure. Yeah, usually with high, uh, low quality stuff, best thing to do is just leave it thick. And don't try to make something thin out of it. Yeah, let's see. So that's what I, I think I'll do that. I'll intentionally make something thick if it doesn't look like it's good for thinning. And I don't know if this is a heat treat because that that just took three big whacks on that very good surface area and nothing happened. So I don't know if it's a heat treat. It feels like it's not. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like something I would heat treat. So I got other stuff similar. Uh, I don't know about this. I think these are heat treats. No, I don't know. I'll be napping. I'll be napping those too, so don't worry. I'm gonna I'm going to be producing a lot more videos. So I gotta nap everything. What is the what is the issue with this? So I hit there a couple times, and then I just I think I hit that spot. It just broke in a weird spot. Hmm. Okay, I'll just leave it thick. There it is. There's a thick point right there. Yeah. All right, let's do something else. Oh, that is a heat treat. Okay, let's see. Test the Ruski. I don't know. Could be, could be heat treated. It's from my old stash. Old stash, yeah, it probably is, yeah. All right, this looks like it's better than the last piece. I wanna nap something with some color. It starts to get kind of monotonous with the same colors all the time. Like those last three pieces down there, that I want to refurbish. Those are all Georgetown. The one I just broke into pieces, I don't know, I don't think I'm gonna nap that. 
It's too, too nasty. This one looks okay. Yeah, but you say, nap the nasty stuff so we know how to nap the stuff we have in our backyard. Yeah. All I can say is, if you want napping to be fun, you've got to get better stuff. Because napping that nasty stuff is not any fun. At least not for me. I do a lot of it because people, people want to see what can be done with it. Yeah, it's not fun, but I want to see, they say this, it's not fun yet, but I want to see what its potential is. Yeah, I just want to see the potential because now, because if I see the potential, I can use that in my thought experiments for whatever comes up that I think about. For instance, I find an artifact or see an artifact online made of something similar. I'll compare it to what I've seen done with that stone. And I can say to myself, this is what they say. I can say to myself, yeah, that's feasibly done with some nasty material. Yeah. It's possible that that artifact could be made of nasty material. So then I'm going online, I'm going to burn up the computer telling everybody, yeah, all this nasty stuff can be made into beautiful artifacts. And they were, because I saw it done. Now I have it as part of my thought experiment library. It can be napped. Yeah. Yeah, but this is what I say. This is me, just me. Just because it can be napped doesn't mean it was napped. It's a good possibility. And yeah, it's not nothing wrong with having it in your library of thought experiment. Uh, a library accessible to your thought experiments. It's nothing really wrong with that. It's just burning up the computer online telling everybody. That's what kind of is a little bit dicey. Start to generalize from one experience. It's called induction. And if you study philosophy, you know that there's a problem with induction. It's got a serious problem. You try to generalize, or not try, but if you generalize from one example, it's not logically valid. No. So you're spreading invalidity all over the place. Yeah. I talked about intellectual hygiene before. You're not being very intellectually hygienic if you spread invalidities. That goes for me too. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of induction before I learned what it was. I used to say all the time, it's commonly believed or there are examples of, so therefore blah, blah, blah. Not uh, commonly believed among a minority of people. Therefore, I can extrapolate that to a larger, larger group. Yeah, I used to do that until I found out that's a there's a problem with it. That's a problem. It's also a problem if I see 
some artifacts that are heat treated and then make the generalization that they were mostly heat treated, that would be a problem too. And I've been tempted to say that. I'm not sure. I might have said that up to 70% of artifacts in a certain area are heat treated. Or a, a certain point type or whatever. I think more than 70% of the, the Native American cultures knew about heat treating. But I forget my old statements. Based on my personal experiences, blah, blah, blah. I got to be careful about that. Put a little qualifier on there. Yeah, based on my personal experience, this stone heat treats. It don't look heat treated, so therefore, there's a good possibility that these stones that look raw might be heat treated, and blah, 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 that kind of stuff. I got to be careful of that too. I'm guilty of it, so I don't blame you. I got to make sure I am in intellectually hygienic as well yeah that's a drawback of learning about philosophy you learn about the mistakes too that people make I've been studying statistics as well I learn about mistakes that statisticians make as well as the general public I've been I'm gonna I'm uh, getting into studying mathematics again Oh, yes. Did you know there's imaginary numbers? Mm-hmm. Imaginary. They don't even hide it. Imaginary numbers. Complex numbers. Holographic stuff in mathematics. Yeah. They call it holographic blah, blah, blah. I forget now. I was looking at it last night. Anyway, there are there are ways to uh, solve problems by bringing in the concept of imaginary numbers. Oh yes. So this is interesting material. As far as preserving certain colors within it, like I don't want to lose certain areas, I gotta not even think about that part. Because as soon as I start wanting to preserve a certain area, that area becomes lumpy. And then I gotta remove the lump, and that just removes the interesting area. So I'm just looking at the shape, I'm not looking to see if I can preserve any of the colors. All right. So the next stage, if you're new to the channel, I, I tend to do these things in stages because I have to shift my mindset. Yeah, I have to shift my mindset from what I was doing just a few minutes ago to this next stage. So I know that there is stages, at least for me, right? I can't say that in general because that would be induction. That would be using my personal experience to make a generalization. I don't think that it would be necessarily true with everybody that they would change their mindset. Some people don't even care about. Okay, now I got to shift, but me, I've got to, I've got to do that. To some people, it's all just flint napping. It's all under the same umbrella. There's no shift in mindset. It's all napping. They all got it. 
readily accessible. There's no compartmentalization. There's nothing. It's just all flint napping. They don't have a change in mindset at all. Me, I have to, I have to compartmentalize this stuff. If I don't, I tend to be too expedient. I grab the wrong tool. I, I, I smack too hard with, uh, with certain techniques. I don't slow down. I don't. I don't regularize. I don't strategize. That sort of thing. If I divide it into stages, I can more easily develop strategies. Even though I'm expedient, I still have I still have room in there for strategizing a little bit. And that little bit counts, especially when I'm focusing on the areas that I have trouble doing, like the tips. If I don't focus on a tip as a special problem because of the way I nap, I'll keep making the same mistake over and over again. I've got to focus on not making the same mistake over and over on the tips, namely the step fracturing and the stuff on the tips and then leaving the base too fat. If I leave the base too fat in the beginning, I try thinning at the end and I snap the whole thing in half. I, I end up thinning at the end of the process and then end up snapping the whole thing because I'm making the point here on the base with intense percussion of some sort. So I am working on the fluting stuff, but it, the reason I haven't worked on it all that much is because it requires a lot of large pieces. I've got some projects on the side I need to finish with the large pieces that I have. Once I finish those, I can, I can start using large pieces again for other things. Right now, all my large pieces are tied up in side projects. I, you know, they have to be stashed aside. I got to stash a lot more than I actually need. In, in fact, I got to stash 90% of it just in case, because you never know. But after that's done, I can start using the large pieces to do the fluting stuff. Why large pieces? Because it's easy to flute the little stuff. No one wants to see that. Not even me. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see me napping little cloves like this size, you know? Two and a half fingers wide. That's a little teeny one. Don't need to see that. I don't want to see that. It's going to be at least three inches long. Maybe more. To really master the technique. Yeah. Yes, little, little pockets are ugly. But yeah, if this was raw, it'd be harder to work on. Yeah, I couldn't remove big old pieces like that without really risking the whole thing. Right now, I'm, put, I'm not putting everything on the line for each strike. This is pretty safe. It's not to the point where it's so thin that every strike can, can snap it. It's getting there, though. Getting there. few more big strikes, thinning flakes, and it's going to get thin enough to be dicey the whole rest of the way. I have to eliminate that area. 
Even though it's a purpley nice color, I gotta get rid of it. It does not nap well. See that? Doesn't want to be an arrowhead right there. And that area says, nope, I'm not going to get no cooperation from me. So I got to get rid of it. It wants me to get rid of it. It doesn't want to be part of this arrowhead. Nope. Doesn't want nothing to do with it. Oh, did it do it? Oh, nice. See, from the other side? Yeah. That was good. Now, starting to get thin with that kind of strike. What am I going to do? These always end up being Carlsbad points because I can't think of what else to do with these. Without losing a lot of mass, what other point can I make? I don't know. And I always end up with a teardrop shape because it's the easiest. The second easiest is a double point. A teardrop at least allows you to save the material. So at least you can see some of the pattern, oh, nice colors. Whoops, whoopsie daisy. You can't have that. Too many of those strikes that don't release. Those are not good because they might be hiding incipient cracks. Something might have might have happened. Just can't see it. And then it'll rear its ugly head and break where you don't expect it. So every strike needs to remove something just to be safe. If you don't care about being safe, then it's no big deal. Hit in the same spot over and over, no big deal. But if you want to be safe, you got to try not to hit over and over in the same spot. Unless the flakes are coming off. Then you can hit over and over. You can remove flakes from the same spot as long as it, they're being removed and you can see what's going on. Yep. Carlsbad points are pretty thick. So it doesn't really matter how the preform comes out on the Carlsbad type. That's why I end up making lots of them, but uh, this one, I don't know. I want to do something else. I want to, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Yeah. Is it going to mess with my plans? Is it going to mess with me? Should I just sell it as a, a blade, a biface, or a preform? Everything I nap is going to go to the auction. Everything I nap on video. I can just leave it this way and then let someone else finish it off. It's a fish scale. It's a fish scale, dude. Yeah. These look like fish scales when they come off. Back in the day, that's what uh, the observers would, would say, at least in one case. The nappers would be producing small flakes that look like fish scales. Yeah. All right, so this is the end of that stage, right? Where it's down to a stage where now I can just make anything I want. It's thin enough. 
doesn't need to be thinned anymore unless you want it super thin. I don't want it super thin. Nope. I just want it to live. I want it to survive. I don't want to. I don't want to kill it. I don't want to kill it in half. Nope. Sometimes these bands of color are weak in some areas, so I've got to watch that too. If I start pushing way too hard with pressure, I could snap the whole thing just because it has a weak layer. Yep. How do I know? I don't know. Just, just a hunch. Yeah. Just a little intuition or whatever. A little gut feeling. Yeah. I got a peaceful, queasy feeling. <laughs> I was listening to oldies on the on the on the TV. There's a channel with a bunch of oldies. This one I got a peaceful, easy feeling. Well, sometimes I get a peaceful, queasy feeling. I don't want to continue working on the on the point when that happens, or continue what I'm doing at the time. If if you get that peaceful, queasy feeling, you gotta watch out. I was just thinking about there are some times where I'm able to meditate while I'm flint napping and just kind of zone out and focus on nothing but the napping. It's a form of meditation, yeah. But that's only if you are not trying to create anything special. Hello. Is it open? I think so, yes. You can go in. Okay. Okay, let's see now. What am I gonna do with it? What am I gonna do with this? What am I gonna do? Probably nothing. Alrighty. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it and not worry about notching it. You know, I'll offer. Somebody will like it. Oh, yes. Take off the dull spots. So we can cut ya. Cut ya. Yeah. Slice ya. <laughs> yep. Nice and, nice and sharp. I don't put stiff fractures in the tip. You would get me highly upset. Highly upset. I got one almost right there.
Mm -hmm. Almost there. I don't want to make the tip too special. Because if I do, it's going to be steppy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to mess with it. I want to, but I'm not going to. All right, so that's good enough for me. I don't know about for you, but it's good enough for me. Next segment, next video.